Greetings to everyone. It's me, Atisha, from Kalimpong. Kalimpong is a tiny hill station nested in the northern region in the state of West Bengal to an average elevation of 1250 meters. Today, I'm standing in front of Center School for Tibetan with my friend Rajesh, who will be following the interaction process. Hello, Atisha. Hi. So, I think we should begin our interview. Yes. Come on Rajesh, let's go to meet the officials of the Centre School of Tibetan Kalimpong. Greetings to everyone. It gives us immense pleasure to be here with Principal Centre School for Tibetan Kalimpong, Mr. Prakash Gaur. So, could you elaborate more on the school? Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, you for giving me time to speak about my school. This school was established way back in 1962 when the Tibetans they came to India as refugees and here these schools were established with the intention to preserve the culture and language of the Tibetan students in India. Here we have Tibetan student, uh, students coming from different parts of the country as well as some children coming Tibetan children coming from Nepal plus we have 10 percent quota for the admission of the Indian students locally so at present we have students coming from Sikkim Arunachal Pradesh few from Nepal and then the local children who are getting education in this institution at present we have around 300 students out of which 148 are boys and 153 are the girls student and this schools as i said has a unique characteristic here we have both the tibetan as well as the indian students studying in the same class up to class 5th, we have Tibetan as a medium of instruction. That is social science, English, mathematics is taught in Tibetan. But after class 5th, that is 6th onwards, we have English as a medium. Here the Tibetan children, they take in Tibetan as a language. And Indians, they are given Hindi as a language. And at we have science stream as well as arts stream in class 12. We don't have commerce stream, but we have approached our higher authorities to open commerce stream in our school also. And uh, the children here, they are involved in different activities the co-curricular activities as well as the academic activities we have a list of co-curricular activities like debate competition we have here you can say the art and drawing competition we have calligraphy competition we have dance competition as well as the studies we have hostel for boys separate for boys as well as the girls and last year we had last since last two years we have been producing 100% result in class 12th and 10th among the schools in Kalimpong as well as among the CSTs in different uh, different states like Uttarakhand, Himachal we have topped the other uh, uh, you can say CSTs and we ranked first among all CSTs in terms of the result uh, last year. So, as you said that to class 5th, you are, you are giving education to the students in the Tibetan language and the students have the choice of selecting their second language till class 10th. So, can you please tell us about that and a little bit about the curriculum that your school is following? Yeah, up to from class 1 to class 5th, we have as i said we teach all the subjects except english all the subjects the medium of instruction is tibetan the books are framed by 
your uh, DOE Dharamshala, and they have uh, they have translated the books and uh, they have framed their curriculum accordingly according to CBSC, and they are simply translated and are in Tibetan. Whereas from class six onwards up to class twelve, we strictly follow the curriculum as per the CBSC norms. So, sir. As you told us about the Tibetan culture, about the Tibetan refugees who have come to India and settled here, and the education provided by a school, so can you please tell us about where they are staying, and what facilities are you giving to those people and the students, and the, about can you please explain about the hostel system of your school, sir? Yeah, um, as far as the Tibetan students are concerned. We have hostel for the Tibetan children only. Uh, that is, we provide them meals, all breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Plus, the uniform is being provided by the school. The test book, everything is provided by the government of India. The funds are being provided by the government of India, and we are regularly providing them all these facilities here. As far as the Indian children are concerned, they are generally the day scholars. Tibetan children, some of them, they are locally and they are day scholars. So if they they are able to manage and economically they are sound, so they are not provided seat in the hostel. So they can, they are generally the day scholars. And as I said, Indian students are all day scholars. They are not hostlers. So since you said that you've been providing online classes to the students are all the students being able to access and if not what are the problems faced by them yes online pro this is a new experiment we are having certain problems that is the connectivity problem is the children especially in the rural areas of arunachal pradesh they are not able to access to these uh, the online classes Secondly, we have experimented a lot. We have the teachers are teaching through this Google Meet book and WhatsApp. We are trying to provide the notes to the children. We are trying our the teachers are trying their level best to provide the maximum uh, material as well as the classes to the children. Yeah, the problem faced is, um, as I said, one is regarding the connectivity. Second, like the teachers they used to monitor the children uh, regularly in the class all the children at the same time but here and they used to have here you can say um, the personal contact with the children that we have lost in this online classes the secondly the regarding the answer script evaluation the teachers are facing be little bit problem because earlier we used to have the hard copy and checking was and we used to get, give the feedback quickly to the children by calling them individually to the uh, teacher's table and then the checking their answer script in front of them and giving them guidance that this is the mistake, this is here what we have, what you should write, what you, what you have done, what mistakes you have committed. That little problem is arising here. And as far as the teachers, little answer script evaluation because uh, you can say big question papers as you know in class 12 so that day is taking a lot of time uh, evaluations of answer script thank you we would like to thank you sir for giving us your precious time it was great interacting with you hope to see you soon in the near future also we would like to interact with few of the teachers of your school good morning teacher we're going to meet another head of CSD who is the administrative head of the of CSC. So let's meet him. Hello, sir. Hello. It's me, Atisha. Hello, Atisha. And it's me, Rajesh Roy. Hello, Rajesh. Welcome to CST Kalingpo. Uh, in Tibetan, we say uh, Tashi the Lake. So, Tashi the Lake to both of you. Uh, it's wonderful to see you uh, come to CST Kalingpo. Welcome. So, we interacted with a lot of the educators for, uh, of CST. And it came to our knowledge that you are providing the boarding facilities for the Tibetan students. Yeah. Could you elaborate more on it? Sure, sure. Yeah, um, 
Uh, we have a boarding facility uh, in our school and uh, see uh, there are about uh, five schools uh, CSTs all over India where this sort of you know uh, hostel facilities are provided and we are one of them. We have another sister concern in Darjeeling and the the primary reason why we provide uh, hostel facilities uh, to our children is because most of the students you know who come to study here are Tibetan refugees from uh, very far away places you know uh, from uh, north uh, northeast Arunachal uh, uh, and also we we have we do have children from Nepal Indo Tibet borders of uh, you know uh, Nepal and also from Sikkim and uh, we do have children uh, from uh, 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 Bhutan so uh, because these ch these children you know most of them are refugees and, and they don't have a, a, a proper place to stay here and they even if they wish to uh, uh, you know stay in a paying guest uh, language will become a major barrier so that's why uh, we have provided uh, hostel facilities for Tibetan children so uh, but uh, not only uh, you know in our hostel it's not only for the Tibetans we do have children who are from uh, local uh, you know Kalingbung villages uh, who cannot commute every day so we have uh, uh, this uh, a quota for Himalayan children, you know, local students who, uh, so uh, it's it's like uh, it's a mixture of Tibetan and non-Tibetan children. So, can you please tell us about the facilities and the accommodation provided mm -hmm. to not just the refugees, mm -hmm. Tibetan refugees, but the normal people here? Yes. And can you please elaborate about the people, Tibetan people especially, yes, yes. who are staying here? Mm -hmm. And what difficulties are they facing? Can you please tell us about that? Uh, of course. Uh, see, uh, um, the first thing is, how did these children become a refugee? Yes, uh, mm, Tibet was an independent nation until 1949. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, but then after the Chinese invasion uh, and uh, subsequent, uh, you know, uh, uh, fleeing of His Holiness the Dalai Lama along with uh, about 80,000 uh, Tibetans, uh, we took shelter in India and uh, we are very grateful that this great nation uh, has you know, given Tibetans a place to stay and everything in fact uh, we are, if you ask any Tibetan we are like we feel most grateful uh, uh, to the uh, 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 Tibetan, uh, Indian uh, government, Indian people. So, uh, so we. I mean, most of the children. We are also. I'm. I'm. I'm included. So we became refugee because of this Chinese aggression uh, in, into Tibet. So Tibet is now under Chinese occupation. So most of the. the it's a, it's a third generation children now. So uh, their grandparents uh, fled from Tibet. They uh, came to India. The Indian government, uh, you know, took us as, uh, uh, you know, uh, refugees. And uh, so, uh, and then they uh, provided us with all these uh, facilities, you know, uh, places to stay. We have so many Tibetan settlements all over India. And also uh, they, uh, you know, uh, helped us to uh, establish separate schools uh, especially for Tibetan refugees. So <clears throat> um, there are different kind of uh, socio-economic background uh, for the Tibetan refugee children. You know, see those refugees who are from uh, uh, cities and towns, they're quite okay, well off and uh, but then there are, I mean, 60 to 70 percent of the those Tibetan children who are mostly from a very remote area secluded places you know uh, so to provide uh, education to these children uh, these uh, uh, hostels have been set up uh, I tell you from my own experience you know when I interact with these young kids you know when they come to school uh, as a border 
Uh, they tell us so many uh, uh, you know, the challenges that they face uh, in their villages. You know, Most of the children, they don't have even electricity in their villages, let alone internet and all these things. And uh, most of the students, uh, their parents uh, do, uh, uh, you know, uh, labor, work, uh, farming, S still uh, far away from the modern world that we are in. So, uh, and even uh, we have students, you know, uh, who uh, like walk for four days by foot and then take a bus for two days and then from uh, the, uh, after six days they reach Siliguri and from Siliguri they uh, reach our school. So after leaving their home uh, and, and uh, until they reach uh, Kalingpung, it takes about one week. So uh, we have children like that and uh, so it becomes our responsibility to, to you know, provide them uh, with as much comfort and uh, uh, as much good facilities as much as we can and uh, we are very grateful to the uh, Ministry of Education. Uh, if you compare the facilities that the Government of India has provided to this school, uh, it's it's wonderful, you know, it's no less than any uh, good public school. Thank you very much, sir. It was great knowing about the Tibetan culture and also the Tibetan students. Hope to see you soon in the near future. My pleasure. And uh, uh, I'm really uh, hopeful that uh, whatever you're doing, you know, uh, it will uh, go a long way in giving you a very good experience. Uh, and hope to see you once again. So uh, thank you for coming to CST Kelly. So let's go Atisha. We're going to have another conversation with the teachers of humanities. Hello sir. Hello sir, I'm Rajesh. And I'm Atisha. We would like to ask you a question regarding the pandemic sir. As soon as the pandemic began, there was thrill around everywhere. So I would like to ask you that how did you face the situation and what precautions did you take and what measures did you take to deal with it for teaching the students, sir? When the situation uh, came, uh, we were completely in dilemma. So earlier, we did so many uh, experiments to implement our uh, strategy to deal or to cope with this pandemic situation. So, we did what we created WhatsApp group. Uh, we conducted our classes through WhatsApp call, but there there were some limitations, or there are some limitations in WhatsApp call. We may add only four or five students. So later on, we did what we created Google Classroom, but there was not interactive uh, session with students. Later on, finally, we did what our school management, our learning teachers decided to go through Google Meet. And finally, after uh, April or May, we continued our uh, interactive session with students on Google Meet. So as soon as the government introduced the lockdown, there was chaos not only amongst the students but also in the teachers because online classes for Indian teachers was completely new. So how did you overcome it? And also now as we are aware that the online classes are going on, uh, do you think that the students are confident uh, to appear for the board exams? Actually, uh, first of all, it was a challenge for us. Because uh, we have to see the two things. Even not hampering the education, the children's education. And second thing, no one should be infected with the coronavirus. So we have to uh, face these two things. So first of all, it was a really difficult and a challenge. But as the time passes, after two months, you can say everybody was ready. Even the parents also supported them. They, uh, when you interacted with the parents, uh, they also were uh, ready uh, to uh, adjust their children. And uh, nowadays, uh, when you uh, come across uh, and uh, past more than 10 months, I think, uh, all, all are eager and uh, they are learning well. But even in some areas, the remote areas, those who are the very poor, 
and don't having the systems means the right mobiles uh, even the not textbooks so but for the textbooks so many uh, apps are there we uh, told them to install this app when you see one thing now uh, for the competitive exams if you talk about them they have to uh, go to join the coaching uh, no uh, a persons uh, agent living in uh, villages they have to move to the far city and spend lots of money but by this way the online platform many online coaching have been started thank you sir for sharing your opinion and we really appreciate the time that you have given us thank you sir thank you welcome come rajesh let's interact with the music teacher miss neema roma hello ma'am hello it's hi it's a great privilege to meet you okay so i would like to ask you about your subject which is music yes and can you please elaborate about the traditional tibetan music that you teach in here okay um I teach um, Tibetan songs, Tibetan dance, uh, various Tibetan musical instruments, and other than that, uh, we normally teach some Hindi songs and Hindi community songs, patriotic so many songs. That is the, also the part and parcel of the uh, our activities. So these are the things that when school functions normally we used to teach all these kinds of something which related to music and not only music, songs and dance also, but most of them it is in Tibetan. So ma'am, during this pandemic, we all are facing the online classes. <laughs> We're learning from there. So can you please tell us how you are teaching the students the subject of music through the online classes? Okay. Oh, uh, so that that is I think a very beneficial point for the students because for the whole day in front of the laptops and mobiles, they will the they get you know, like the same procedure all day. So just for a change, I think musics and these dance and songs helps a lot in children's mind. because uh, uh, after long hours of same method of teachings and all and all of a sudden as a music teacher uh, we have also some periods after that subject and then on that time uh, we teach some classes songs some classes uh, dance and some through their music also but music in the terms like uh, normally we give the notes to them first introduce that uh, introduce that notes to them let them know how the notes goes on and thereafter by just showing Uh, with a matlab uh, uh, demonstrating how to play this just a uh, basic and you know, because we can't be uh, tell that much uh, teach that much level as the school functions normally because uh, you know that uh, in this uh, some people get very low uh, network problem also so due to that uh, we can't read that much clear but uh, somehow it helps them and in the same also dance and music also uh, like you no know, they whole day they will be sitting so just for a change and make them refresh their mind so what i do i now stand up and this is music but it i have to get up and you also get up no so like that's why i just step by step like the what the choreograph does 1 2 3 this is 1 2 3 like and then the children also follows that and may they make the video and the next day they will send it back to me and then i will check who's right who's going wrong and then i just correct them and th- through this way the children gets um, their um, refresh their mind as well as they learn learn something by enjoying because they are fed up of, of <laughs> learning all through the same project all day long so this is what i do and what i feel a good for them thank you so much ma'am for sharing your views on music because this is very beneficial for the students okay thank you both for giving me this platform to speak something about 